Bandstand, USA. Hey, come aboard, everyone. We're glad to have you with us. From Manhattan, coast to coast on Mutual, we bring you Bandstand, USA, the only live jazz show in radio today. The show that brings you the live, inspired performances of the world's great jazz man. You see, the bandstand microphones have taken right into the very spots where these jazz men are performing in person. We can bring it to you live because we have the cooperation of the American Federation of Musicians, James C. Petrello, President. My name is Guy Wallace, and listen to what we have lined up for you tonight. From the Cafe Bohemia, 15 Barrow Street in Greenwich Village here in New York, Miles Davis from the Village Vanguard, the Modern Jazz Quartet. So... Let's get the show on the road, shall we? As Bandstand USA takes you direct to the Cafe Bohemia, where Jimmy Garofalo is presenting Miles Davis.
That's the Miles Davis group playing for you from Cafe Bohemia. I hate to interrupt a very sterling performance, but we have some real news for you tonight. Maynard Ferguson, one of the outstanding exponents of modern swing jazz, is standing by ready to answer a question submitted by a listener. Maynard, welcome to the bandstand. We've heard your music many, many times on the show, and we've broadcasted coast to coast on Neutral, and it's so wonderful, and we're so happy to have you here with us in person tonight. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, the question that we have for you to answer tonight comes from Leo G. Sanchez. He's a radar technician at the Palm Beach Air Force Base, West Palm Beach in Florida, and it goes like this. How are was modern jazz derived from Dixieland jazz? Now, that's the question. How are you going to answer that? Well, uh, when you say derived from, it was not an absolute thing that suddenly happened where uh, a whole bunch of people suddenly said, we're going to stop playing Dixieland and play modern jazz. And I think that probably it was more of a case of... Uh, Oh, you can take, for instance, your difference between uh, Harry Edison from the Count Basie band as opposed to Louis Armstrong. Yeah. And uh, you, in other words, and I'm sure you can get mo much closer people than that, but uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is it was a gradual uh, change, just as uh, automobiles change and things like that. But however, there's still very many good arguments about uh, how that the, they don't build automobiles like they used to, and that's where the Dixielander, Dixieland crowd can shout and uh, wave their banners and... Uh, uh, it's all jazz, so as far as I'm concerned, it's all wonderful. Well, uh, I think to elucidate a little bit more, you mean that there was really no actual flip over switch. It started in the back rooms among the musicians, although the public probably first became aware of the big switch when it did start to play it as opposed to Louis Horn, right? Yes, I would say that uh, that's a very, very good explanation. In other words, uh, uh, I'm sure that the there was a young guy listening to Louis Armstrong, many of them, when he was also fairly young, and... Uh, loved the way Louis played, but yet uh, didn't completely imitate him. I don't think that anybody ever should, and I think that uh, music is out, modern jazz music is always changing, and uh, uh, the modern jazz that we hear today uh, will not be as modern uh, five or ten years from today. Or think. 20 years. Right. <laughs> there you are, Leo. That answers your question, and uh, I don't blame you for not being able to find the switch from Dixie to Progressive in any book that uh, you picked up, because I don't know of any book that it's written in. But right now, well, let's listen, shall we? As Bankstown, USA takes you direct to the village vanguard and the modern jazz quartet.